Hi viewers and thank you for joining me in another episode of House and Home. I hope you all my awesome viewers are adapting well to the new normal, which is washing handling all get the time and time you go to the house, wear a mask at all times. Now back to our lineup, we have cooking with Besta. I show you another home decor idea, another feature story for this week, Teresa with another sewing, and Quinten shows us how to use Google app on tech people. Now we start the show with cooking and this time our bestie Noilin is making garlic spaghetti with pesta tuna chunk all the way from the beautiful East Epic province. Here it is. Hi viewers and welcome to another Cooking with Besta. I am Noeline, your Besta Bestie and tonight, yet again, Besta has another tasty and delicious recipe for you. It is Besta Tuna Flakes and Garlic Spaghetti. So we'll proceed to our ingredients and as mentioned, very simple ingredients. We only have five ingredients here and it's our Besta Vegetable Cooking Oil, one to two tablespoons, three to four cloves of garlic, diced, spring onions, spaghetti, you can get spaghetti at your nearest supermarket or any good stores, salt to taste, magic taste or you will know it as MSG and of course viewers the star of our recipe is the none other than Besta Tuna Flakes. So I've preheated my pan, it's on medium heat and we're going to proceed to adding our ingredients. So we're going to start off with one to two tablespoons of Besta vegetable cooking oil. Just let your oil heat up. Once it's heated, then we're going to proceed to adding our garlic. Remember, this is a very simple recipe. It's just garlic and spring onions. So we're just going to saute this until it's slightly brown. Give it a minute or two, continue stirring. I just want to make mention that with my spaghetti, I've pre-cooked my spaghetti. If you're going to do this at home, you only need at least a liter of water and one to two tablespoons of cooking oil and one to two teaspoons of salt. So our garlic is nice and brown. Once we add in our spring onions, we just mix it all together, make sure it's all incorporated. And now our garlic is nicely golden brown, and that's where we want it. So we're going to add our star ingredient, which is Besta Tuna Flakes. So we're just gonna put that in there. While we're waiting for our tuna flakes to heat up a bit, just one interesting fact out of all the man, many interesting facts about Sipik, the Sipik River is the country's longest river known as the Amazon Pacific. The region is home to a tribe such as the Chambi tribe, where reverence of crocodiles is enshrined at the heart of the male initiation, the ancient culture known as the Crocodile Man of PNG. So WeWack has a lot of interesting facts, but that's just one of them. And now that our tuna flakes and garlic and spring onions look like they're ready, we're gonna go to our next step, and that's adding our spaghetti. So as mentioned earlier, I've pre-boiled our spaghetti. So I'm just gonna add this in. like so and we're gonna mix and incorporate everything together this is such a simple recipe you can cook this and have it for lunch or dinner or even have it as a cold dish the next day very tasty I'm now just going to add some salt to taste 
salt again depends on how much salt you like. So I'm just adding lick lick. And here I'm just going to add some magic taste. Just lick lick, but it's optional just for extra flavor. Or you can use um, any cube you have, whether it's beef or chicken or any other spices you would like. Because that's the best thing about cooking with Besta. The options are endless. And viewers, now our dish is ready to be plated. Like so. I'm garnishing today with red peppers and tomato. And spring onions, just for color and taste also. And viewers, now that we've plated our dish, just a friendly reminder from Besta, if you're going to cook or eat, always remember to wash your hands. And if you're gonna cough, cough into your elbow because COVID is here to stay. So let's take precaution. And there you have it, our Besta tuna flakes and garlic spaghetti. Thank you, Noelin, for that simple recipe. I usually cook spaghetti with mincemeat and tomato sauce, but thanks to our best of friends, now I can go and try something new for myself. Well, viewers, you can purchase those ingredients at the store near you and whip it up for yourself at home. We'll take a quick break and be back with more. someone who loves pizza but on a low budget? I am here at Yumiet Estate here in Gerago. Today we feature a talented person who makes pizza at the comfort of her home. If you want to hear about a pizza making story, follow me. I'm making um, Hawaiian pizza today. Yes. Okay, I just want to have a chat with you. Sure, I'll just get you a chat and you should start. Hi, my name is Daisy. Um, I own this pizza business and we're located in Yumiet uh, compound. And this is where we um, prepare all the pizzas and yes. I'm from Milin Bay. Yeah. M's Pizza, um, it started three months ago and this business has really helped us uh, so far. And um, we normally do all the pizzas here and then our customers come and they pick up the pizzas here and then they take it with them. Yeah, so we don't normally do deliveries. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Now, could you just tell us the story behind M's Pizza? Okay, M's Pizza, we, it, it, it all started when we went to Vision City and then um, we were like, okay, probably, you know, we just pick out some recipes here and then go try them at home because we didn't want us, you know, spend, and it was so crowded at Vision City and, you know, because due to the COVID-19, we just decided like, you know, let's just probably get some recipes from Vision, Vision City and just try out something. So when I came, I was like, oh, let's try pizza, try making pizza. So 
once we um, we tried out the pizza and then we tasted it, it was really good and then my husband posted the pizza on Facebook and then our good friend he was like oh how much for the pizza and then that made like the idea like okay I think we should sell the pizza and so yeah so we then we said okay why not we just told him the price and he was like okay yeah I want to get one oh okay then it started from there that's it the first pizza that I made was the meat lovers pizza yeah meat lovers pizza yeah that's the one that I posted on Facebook and yeah got a lot of attention from it and that's it I started <laughs> So you mentioned you bake pizza. What else do you do apart from that? Yeah, I think we just bake cakes, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, I sell them as well, yeah. I try to make my cake a little bit different from others because normally others, they have, um, you know, the normal type, are we? So what I do, I just use sprinkles and just sprinkle it up. And then, yes, I have a chocolate topping, just top it up and that's it. So simple, yeah, it's affordable as well. So. If a viewer is interested in purchasing a pizza from you, how do they go about it? Okay, if you're a viewer who would like to purchase pizzas from um, M's Pizza, you can go to Facebook. Uh, you can go to M's Pizza. We have a page on Facebook. Um, I also use Daisy Donald, so you can always message me through that, give your contact, and I will direct you. Um, it takes one hour to make a pizza, so you can, um, we'll direct you all the way to you, me at Compound, and then you can come pick up your uh, pizza here. Yeah. Now, if there's a viewer who has an occasion coming up or a birthday party coming up, um, what's on your menu that they can purchase from? Okay, we have, currently we have four pizzas. We make four pizzas. We have the Hawaiian pizza, the meat lovers pizza, um, the chicken pizza, and the pepperoni pizza. Yes. Baking to me is um, loving what you do and um, doing it wholeheartedly um, for people to to enjoy, yeah. Baking is just, you know, you know, being fun and just playing with dough, but creating something, yeah, out of anything uh, in the house or something. So just flower, you know, that just do something. And I just love what I do. I mean, first of, I'll be honest, like I just made it uh, just to have uh, like you know something different in the house. But then, you know, when customers started telling me that, wow, this is really nice, like you can really do this. Huh? And then I just really like the way, you know, you know, when you're preparing pizza and then you, you know, throw the cheese and, you know, put the paste and all this. It's just really creating something and the outcome, it just makes you feel like, wow, you can do something, huh? even though you don't, you know, intend to do something. When you, you know, when you like, you know, prepare it and see the outcome, it inspires you to do more. And that's what, you know, keeps me going up. And my customers' feedback and the uh, outcome of you know the pizza that I make and yeah my uh, my family today always um, encourage me to keep on going and doing what I do so yeah I'm always thinking of like expanding it like having my own um, restaurant or something like that yeah but um, I was thinking of just like renting a little place first and then we can have driving and pick up Leslie and then we can move on to bigger things you know and then like bring in probably like um, fast food like chips and chicken and ice cream or drinks and something and then just like top it all up with the pizza and that's it. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'm, I just want to tell people that, you know, right now it's really tough huh? due to this COVID-19 and people are looking for things to do. And so if you're at home, you know, you know, you you just go out and try do something, you know, try help your parents by doing something. If you're a child and you can cook, do something, help them. You know, you may never know something that you can prepare. It might, you know, people might start to like it. Customers might like it. And you don't know, you might be doing that in the next five years and, you know, do this very successful with what you do so yeah and the other thing is you know to mothers out there like you know whatever you do you know small or big just keep doing it you know then times are hard but you know at this time we just need to keep going and yeah to help each other
our pizza is ready for lunch now viewers if you're looking for an affordable pizza in town check out M's pizza thank you for your time and thank you for your time Lisa I have a slice for you here you can taste it oh thank you well viewers I'll see you on the other side I have to taste this bye Alright, you know what a drawstring bag is, so we're going to make one. I have the following props to help me complete this project. So I have a plain fabric. This is for the body of the bag. So I'm just going to put this aside and show you the measurements. So I have a plain fabric. This is the body of the bag, which is, which I have two pieces, I've already cut up the pieces. They are, let's see the measurements, for 46 by 39 centimeters. So they are 46 by 39 centimeters. I'm going to fold this and put them back. I also have the straps, which are 46 by 6 centimeters. All right, I also have my tape measure, some tacking pins, a pair of scissors, and the safety pin, of course, with my sewing machine. So let's get straight into it. So we're gonna start off with the straps. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold in from both sides, like so. I'm just gonna fold in from both sides evenly into the center and fold again. So I'm going to start sewing here. Alright, so with the straps, you can go ahead and add another straight stitch on the other side. But for now, I'm just going to use one straight stitch on just one side. And I'm going to work on the other side, on the other strap, sorry. I'm going to work on the other strap. So, the same process will apply. You can add, you can fold in from both sides right into the center and fold again. Like so. Alright, so our straps are ready. The next step is to work on the body of the drawstring bag. So I have two pieces of fabric. I'm going to work on the first one. This is where the opening of the bag will be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in one centimeter and another centimeter in again. And I'm going to run a straight stitch all the way down. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're going to work on the body of the bag. So I'm going to sew the two pieces together. And at least measure like... 10 centimeters away from the edge, the top edge of the bag. And we're gonna start sewing from here. Also on this side, 10 centimeters on this side as well. And I'm gonna have to sew from here, starting from here all the way down 
across and right to this end. So I know where the mark is. I'm gonna have to measure 10. Yep, so I'm gonna start right here and so all the way down. So I'm using a half inch seam allowance. All right, so I've sewn both pieces together. The next step is to run a stitch, straight stitch. I'm gonna fold in like so, and I'm gonna run a straight stitch all the way down, across this way and up this way. So the same process will apply on both sides. All right, we come down this way come down this way and on this way and make sure the needle stays in 10 I'm gonna sew across so back and forth. and I'm gonna sew up like so. Alright, so the same process has been applied on both sides. You can see that I have run a straight stitch down this way, across and up this way. The next step is to fold in. We're gonna work on the casing now. So casing is where the straps will be pushed through. So I'm just gonna fold in one centimeter again and all the way down like so. And use my pins to pin. Because straight after pinning them, we are going to run straight stitches on both sides. In the center, and I'm going to pin that. There you go. And let's turn. Fold in one centimeter and two centimeters. Again, using your pins again. There you go. All right, now, so we've pinned both sides. Now we're gonna run straight stitches. So with this, I'm gonna start and finish off with a back stitch. And so. so. off with a back stitch as well and we're done okay so we're done with the casing this is the casing for the straps to run through as you can see we have two sets of casings so this is the first casing and this is the second casing I'm going to show you how how to push through the straps but before we do that Let's take a close-up look at this bit. Now, I'm going to have to cut some fabric where the corners are. But like so. The reason why I am cutting a piece of fabric out where the corners are is because I want the corners to pop out. So when I flip the bag right side out, the corners neatly pop out. But before we flip the bag right side out. I'm just gonna run a few zigzag stitches all the way around. I just feel like I need to neaten up this bit inside the bag.
Alright, we're done with the with applying the zigzag stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out the excess thread, fabric, if need be, just to neaten up the edges. And then we're gonna flip the bag right side out. This is how the zigzag stitch looks like. Now I'm just gonna flip the bag right side out. Now watch the corners. Once I flip out, I'm just gonna pop out the corners. There you go. You can see that the corners are popping out. There you go. The last step is to run the straps through the casing. So this is how you run the straps. So I'm gonna use my safety pin to help me push the straps through the casing. So this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so make sure to continue. So you're gonna continue from this side and move on to the other side. Right, so we're gonna pull out from this side and what I'm gonna do is tie the strip. Okay, so we're gonna finish off with the last strap. Take note that we're not gonna start on this side, but we are starting on this side. Just carefully push the strap through the casing. Always make sure that the strap is big enough for both straps to run through. All right, so we are out on the other side and back in another casing. Okay, gonna turn that. Sometimes when the casing is very small, it only fits one strap. So you have to be a lot more careful with your measurements. There you go. So now we've, we're done out on the other side. And the same process will apply. Just tie up both straps like so. All right, so we're done with our final step and this is what you do. Pull the straps from both sides and there is your drawstring bag. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time on Quick Stitch. Bye. I'm here at Geno's Garden and Geno will be showing us how to grow your cabbage organically. Geno, I see that these are not as big as I thought. Um, I think it's just for you and your family. It's like a harvest from this garden into your house, yeah? Yes. Okay, um, so tell us about um, how you grow them organically without um, pest tolerance. Yes, uh, from the Seedless from the banana trunk tray when being raised. After three weeks, we two to three weeks, we um, put them in the uh, beds here. So this is all these are uh, cabbages. They've been from out from the uh, banana trunk trays. I do this because um, it just sustains uh, my my family and I. Um, 
on um, sometimes on our budget. Yeah, so we do not every time have to go to the market to uh, get greens. We have them here. We just uh, harvest them when we need them. We have a rice bag farm in here. This is 40 pak choys in one 10 kg uh, rice bag. It's a method called uh, tower, tower planting that you're just vertically growing up uh, all your plants up. So um, instead of um, sweating out and digging a plot like this, uh, this is the very um, efficient way to get your cabbages. This can be also done in a um, dish or a bigger pot that you can keep it indoor so that uh, or on balconies and it's just easily to be harvested anytime you would want to, yeah. We put this container here um, understanding how many cabbages that we will have to put um, attached to, uh, to the bag and um, we make holes. Um, if you get the holes wrong, you will get um, zero result of this. You might not come up to this. Yeah, so um, we have to understand water flow. We have to understand the root of the plant, how it is moving and how much water it may want during the morning, afternoon and in evenings. So um, by doing that, we apply water on time. Yes. Uh, in this rice bag, we have 40 um, Chinese cabbage uh, okay. salad here in here. So um, we've, we've done a... Um, um, planting technique of weekly, week, week uh, planting. So you'll see that this is bigger. So we're ready to harvest this while we give time for the next lot. Uh, maybe another week we should be ready to harvest this. Maybe another week we should be harvest. So we're just harvesting from the bottom up. Yeah. The method here, I, I kind of really like the method here because uh, we we do not have, or we have, we have experienced zero pests and diseases uh, with this method here. And I'm still doing more researches uh, on how uh, we did not get this. But yeah, I already have some possible answers um, to that on uh, pests and diseases, why uh, we, we had zero of them on our cabbage leaves here. Unlike, the, unlike some of them here, we have some of the leaves been eaten here. Um, also for this plot here, I have uh, tried out. I have planted um, this uh, saladias with, uh, this is marigold. Uh, the leaves has a um, scent to it that you can um, smell the leaf. So um, pests, grasshoppers and uh, what not, uh, they do not love this smell. So this is the marigold that chases away the, uh, all these pests. So we do not have anything. All our leaves are fully green, no bites on them yeah so, okay, so yeah. it sort of helps um, reduce pest tolerance. yeah it, it chases away everything yeah, yeah. So, so they grow healthy they grow so we're intercropping okay. marigold with um, cabbages you can also do marigold with all uh, other plants or other uh, flowers that you see that you have a lot of um, pest and disease issues with them you can use marigold especially pests yes so viewers, that's all we have for you on Gardening with Hausenom. Join me again next time. Until then, bye. I have to go help Geno and the family. So Geno, what are you doing?
Today, the technology has advanced with an incredible speed and it clearly shows that one of your computer at home will be soon forgotten. So that gives you two alternatives. One, to store it away, or two, to be creative using your old computer parts. So let's get started. For this project, you will need a cup, a plastic cup, any kind of cup you wanna use, but as long as it's a plastic that it's a disposal one. And you will need a glue gun. And you will need the main prop, which is the keyboard. I'll be using keyboard today. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to remove all of them on the board. Using the glue gun, glue the keypad onto the cup, then let it to dry. If you have a plain cup, you can glue more keyboards onto it, but if you have a plastic cup like mine, you can add less. There you have it, something simple for you to store your stationery or other things of your liking. Well viewers, now you know that home decor are not for experts. You can come up with something creative at home just by spending a lot of time. Let's take a quick break and when we come back, we have more. Welcome back. Up next, we have Tech People, and this time Quinton shows us how to use Google Map in a city like Port Mosby. Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to another segment of Tech People. I am Q. Now, Mosby is an amazing place to live and drive around, but for visitors coming into Palm, they'll find it hard to travel around and move around town. And even long-time Palm residents can get lost when they're looking for business houses or when they're new to neighborhoods. And here's an app that you'll find useful, and it is the Google Maps. Yep, that's right, Google Maps, one you find on your Android phone. So let's go for a drive and see how it works. And to see how Google Map works, we will go to Mozin Plaza in Garahu. Okay, so you go to Google, Google Maps, and you press go, your location is added, and you type in where you want to go. So, oh, Mosin Plaza. Search, and you get the routes. And then you press start. And we can go for a drive. Google Maps is a convenient way of navigating destinations, discovering local businesses, and exploring unfamiliar areas. Google Maps stands out thanks to its friendlier interface and navigation features. But I bet you didn't know more about the features of these tools. Google regularly updates Maps by adding new features to enhance its experience and making the app easier and friendlier to use. Over the years, Google has added features that allow you to save your favorite places, share your locations with friends, and personalize your recommendation. Continue on Niggy 
occupied a road for one and a half kilometers. Okay. First exit. This is the old Tete settlement. Take the next right onto Dana Valley Avenue, then turn left onto Vacari Street. And here we are, Mozin Plaza. And there you have it, we've reached our destinations. And now you know how to use the Google Maps. Well, that's another segment from Tech People. I'm Q, see you later. Thank you, Quinten, for that. Well, viewers, we've come to the end of this week's show. If you want to know more about this episode, feel free to message us on our Facebook and Instagram page, or you can simply contact us on the details showing on your screen now. But before I go, Repentance Day is on the 26th of August, which is tomorrow, and there will be a public holiday where we celebrate this day in prayer across the country. Until then, stay safe, pleasant viewing. Goodbye.